Good morning, fellow stock traders, and welcome to Mark Petrino's Institutional Trading Research. It's the 27th of March, and let's get ready to make some money. How are you this morning, Mark? I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, we're supposed to have some big rainstorms up here. We had some huge rain. I think it was Saturday, man. A lot of people got flooded out. That's but, crazy. Uh, yeah. All right. So let me just go see what's going on in our headlines. See if there's anything that's going to be affecting the trading. See how Biden incredible. said he took the train over the bridge many times. Yeah, I was just fixed to mention that about your name there. Yeah, he's a smart guy. He's on it. It's like, God, dude, you know, it's like, I think, well, I think he's just like, a, you know, I mean, he's been getting away with lying for so long that it it just doesn't even. Yeah, doesn't it's even just. Think a, that. Yeah, man, he's just been lying for so long. You just, you know, I mean, it's like, and you, you can always tell when he's lying because he's such a bad liar. He steers like right into the camera. So it's like he'll be talking and talking and talking. And it's like, hey, did you get any money from your son's activities? It's like he steers right to the camera. It's like, no, I did not get any money from my son's activity. You know, so, so bad. Yeah, it is. It's just a shameful thing at this point. Yeah. A blight on our country. It's a stain that'll never be cleaned. Yeah, dude. I agree, man. It's all going to come out. And, you know, it's all going to come out. And it, 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 it's, it already is coming out. So, I mean, this whole shame, thing, but this whole thing with P. Diddy, man, that dude's got some serious trouble. Yeah. What's his story? That's, you know, it's some big sex trafficking ring where he's been like trafficking minors for a long time, all kinds of crazy allegations. So, I mean, I don't know if any of it's true yet, but I mean, they raided him. He's left the country, crazy stuff. Then you got, the country. wow. Yeah. Flew off to the Caribbean or something from a private airport in Miami um, while they were raiding his place. You know, this thing with uh, Russia is getting a little explosive, too. They went into to Ukraine yesterday and just lit things up. Yeah, I would imagine that the world's going to be pretty messed up over the next couple of months. Yeah, I think Putin's because tired everyone of it. who wants to get something done knows they got to get it done now before before Trump might come back. Because once he comes back, they're not going to be able to take advantage of. of us oh right yeah, there, I, right I think this, this winds of change are in the air already. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so let's just talk about the markets here. Nvidia had a uh, pretty interesting action. Now, I mean, I don't know if there's what's going to be the follow or you know, what's going to happen, but a lot of times these patterns, you have to understand these technical patterns are not 100% accurate. Most technicians think they work about two out of three times, which is about stacking the odds into your favor. But notice how yesterday we had this big day. Now, this is what we would call in the Japanese world of candlestick charting, a, a bearish engulfing pattern. And in the Western world, we would call this an outside reversal day. But the, the important thing to understand is that sometimes when trends, well, when it we're, when we look for a reversal pattern, right, we're looking for the dynamics that occur when, it, when the leadership of a market is changing, either from bearish to bulls or bulls to bears. Sometimes the, sometimes the change takes place over an extended period of time. And this ends up appearing on a chart as something that looks like maybe a rounded bottom or a rounded top. Sometimes it takes place over a couple time periods and it's really volatile. This could show up as like a V top or a V bottom. Sometimes you get a reversal in one day. And that's potentially what we had yesterday. So notice how the blue team is in charge here. The bulls are pushing the ball up the field or I guess I'll stick with the basketball analogy. The basketball team is dribbling the ball down the court, right? And then if you look at this one day yesterday in the morning, you would have said, wow, it's going to be another up day. Notice how the opening price was higher than the prior day's closing price. So you would have said this is going to be another up day. But by the close, what had happened? The sellers had come in and completely overpower the buyers and push the price all the way back down. And importantly, we ended up closing below the prior day's open. So this one particular day here could show us that the sellers are now in charge. This morning, we're up a little bit, trading up to about here. But 
this could end up showing us that this was a like a reversal day. So let's see if we can see any other ones over here. I, I don't think so. But anyway, but that's what we see there. So you see the same thing happened here. I don't well, let me ask you this question, yeah. Mark. Because it didn't get – so we had that first bullish – I mean bearish engulfing candle, and we came over here not yesterday, but the day before. We didn't come and touch the top of that candle, and then we ran up and reversed. Now, is that a really good sign? Is it going down now? I, I mean, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, it's pushed right through both of those levels fast. Yeah. And uh, also, too, it could end up being what we call a false breakout. So notice how we got above this resistance. It looked like mm -hmm. it was going to break out, but then it reversed. So false breakouts tend to be good contrarian signals. It looks like it's going to break out. It's trading above resistance, but then it rapidly reverses and comes right back in. What happens sometimes is when you have a clear resistance level, traders put what we call a buy stop order just above it. And the idea is, well, if the resistance breaks, it's going to keep moving higher. So the buy stop order is an order that goes above the market. This resistance is right at 950. Someone might have said, all right, I'm going to put my buy stop order at 951. So say the stock is trading at 948. They say, you know what? I'm not going to buy it unless it gets to 951 because I don't want to buy it until it breaks that resistance because if not, it might just not go higher. So you put out what's called the buy stop order, which when it hits the price, you say 951, your order gets triggered to buy. And if there's no follow through with other kinds of buy strategies and those bunch of those buy stop orders get triggered, they push the price higher, but then it tends to reverse and come right back in. So we could be okay. looking at that here. I, obviously, it's too, you know, of course, I'm going to give myself the caveat and say sure. it's kind of too soon to know, but. It's just a good lesson to it's it's a good lesson because it's like a traditional chart pattern. So thank you. Anyway, uh, let's go take a look at oil because I'm pretty interested in what's going on with oil these days. I really can't believe that these idiots are talking about um, cutting interest rates. I mean, we got so much know. inflationary pressure going on here. So I was watching a thing this morning um, on a guy that does real estate here in Florida, and we've got. Uh, increases in inventory that are like 140 percent in some in some counties, and then you're seeing now because uh, I follow Zillow every day, I just kind of like to get an idea of what the real estate market does. And now you're seeing price cuts that are coming in, but you've got builders that are still building at these high interest rates. We've got a a, a storm coming, man. That's going to be ugly. Yeah, yeah, I don't doubt it, dude. I don't doubt it because of all these interest rates were so so low for so long. But there's a really interesting article here, actually. Let me see if it's still up. And it was at some good analysis from Piper Sandler. And they talked about, uh, there we go, what could spark the next market sell-off. So they basically say three things have started every bear market or every correction over the last how many years? Let's see. Uh, going back to 1964, they look at 27 corrections that were more than 10%. And... They were either either from having interest rates move higher, job losses, or some kind of global type thing going on. So these are the three things, higher rates, job losses, and then a global event like a war, something along those lines, have preceded every, every uh, correction. So notice all the higher interest rates. But what I think is kind of interesting is if you look at the housing crisis, this was caused by having interest rates that were too low. Yeah. So Alan Greenspan, in all his brilliant glory and whatever, is being a legend in his own mind, held interest rates too low. And that led to the Internet bubble. It led to the commodities bubble. It led to the housing bubble. So interest rates are really what drives markets. Interest rates and profits. But interest rates and profits are directly related to each other. So... We could see all these corrections here. I started following the market around here. So I remember, well, actually, no, that was the Persian Gulf. But I do remember the Asian financial crisis. And then you had Russia and the long term capital. So long term capital is, a, is I mean, I know this was a long time ago, but history repeats itself. So it's going to mm -hmm. happen again. 
and they were this um all these like you know super genius guys like you've probably heard of the well i mean the black shoals model well like black and shoals yeah. actually worked here and they just got overextended and they got over leveraged and the place ended up blowing up and it almost brought down the markets because they were so big it would be the the equivalent of like boy i don't even JP know morgan well they're like a, like a huge hedge fund go, going under like oh, okay. uh, i mean they were a big hedge fund but then the government had to bail them out um but anyway it's a lot of it this is going to be about interest rates and a lot of it's going to be about inflation and that's why i'm looking at oil here because oil is up 20 percent in in three months and that's pretty darn inflationary oh look here's a here's a good example of a bearish engulfing pattern that played out mm -hmm. so the blue team's in charge looked like it was going to be another up day but by the close the red team pushed it all the way back down and then that preceded a sell -off. so this is the type of action that tends to occur at tops and uh let's see gold is up again all right yeah let's look at gold because that's that's another inflationary thing that i'm looking at oh so this trading at all to, well it's not at an all-time high because on this particular day it got above it but if it closes here it would be an all-time high close is that, was that a but, forward but yeah, curve I mean, that's in that corner what's that the forward curve is 2600 down there in the bottom on your on your trading view yeah this is just like uh oh just a way projection. to look at futures yeah. I mean, this goes all the way out for like years and years and years. So I, I don't think I, I want to really pay attention to that. Um, yeah, let's see what silver's doing. I just don't get it. You know, there's a lot of things about life I don't get. But one of what? them is is these idiots in the. <laughs> I, just, I just don't get it. You know, Why would they be diverging like that, Mark? Uh, I don't know. Maybe just because this was a little well, that, you know what? That's a good that's a good question because they usually trade fairly closely together. Maybe just because this was got a little overbought, but we're back down to this level where there's a good chance there's going to be some support, and maybe we get a bounce there. Let's look at the SLV. Yeah, I'm, I've kind of come to the point where it's like I'm just going to stop trying to figure stuff out and just you know kind of go with the flow. Yeah, I mean, pretty been, much, man. <laughs> yeah, I've been like that for about six months now. I've kind of just said to hell with it. <laughs> I mean, eventually something's going to break either way. It's kind of like waiting for the breakout. Yeah, well, I was reading like this self-help book and it made a really good point. And it said like, you know, worrying is just, worrying is trying to change the future. And it's like, you really can't change it. So you really shouldn't worry. Yeah. You, you'll, you'll notice that you'll flip from being a pessimist to an optimist by looking at life like that as well. Yeah, it's uh free wheeling, baby. So I have my my good friend Brian, man, he uh he had some real tragedy. His uh his not he wasn't actually officially married, but this woman he had like I guess you could even say they were common law wife, but she died because of COVID. She actually she died of she got her uh um after getting the shot, uh, she died. Wow, and um. Yeah, it's really it's a really messed up story. Like they wouldn't let him in the hospital. They wouldn't let him in the hospital to go see her because this was the height of like the lockdowns and everything. Yeah. So you know he ended up losing a lot of money, and finally he just said, "You know what?" And he just took off and he got in his car and he headed out. And now he's living out in Utah, and he's just man. loving life. Man sends me pictures every day of you know fishing, all these trouty catches, and he was a Wall Street guy. Um, you know, and it's you know Wall Street is such a tough place to be because it's so you know so cutthroat and it's so brutal and uh you know so cutthroat it's so high stress it's so high pressure at least it used to be when i was there i don't know what it's like now you should take yourself across country drive mark there's a lot of freedom that you get and a lot of think thought process while you're driving it's a it's a good one i love doing it yeah you know where i live up here we're a suburb of new york and it's uh, even though i live in connecticut and it's a you know it's just such so such type A personality. Everyone just seems like so high strung and so forth. And everything's so friggin' expensive. And 
so yeah, I'll, I'll be making a move sooner or later, probably sooner. I mean, I really I have would, no reason to stay here. I would sell at the top, my friend. And right now the market's looking good. <laughs> I mean, other than my, my brothers and sister are, are here. Um, all right. Anyway, enough of my midlife crisis story here. Let's go see what's <laughs> going on. Oh, wait, I wanted to look at natural gas first. Oh, you know, let's go back to silver because I know Mr. Steven has a position. I would just say he's calling 2138 this morning. Silver futures. Yeah, I mean, we're right here. I would just so SLV is going to follow this pretty much. So it's not going to look exactly the same because silver is open basically 24 seven, whereas SLV is only trading. 9 30 to 5 or i mean sorry, 9 30 to 4 eastern but slv will follow this so just pay just pay attention here could could get a little bit of a bounce there or we could get a breakdown and go down here but we're at a pretty important inflection point i guess you could call it vin you vin you're you're leaving canada are you well listen there's a lot of good land i would look at tennessee i would look at uh um <laughs> Hey, Florida. I'm going to go get a glass of water. So you guys talk about where to move. I would say South Dakota. Yeah, no, there's not enough people in South Dakota. Uh, <laughs> you know, I like the East Coast. I like the Midwest. I like all over America, actually. Out, out West is really beautiful. But really, Tennessee seems like it's pretty cool. They don't have any income tax, uh, state income tax, that is. And land is relatively cheap, and you can buy large swaths of it. Um, but good morning, Jax. Nice to have you with us. Oh, and Montana, too. Montana would be wonderful. A little snowy for me, but, of course, you're from Canada, so you should be able to handle it. And yeah, we'll look at Sox L in just a few minutes. So leaving Canada, you just done? Listen, Florida's going to be a great market. When this, when this thing finally breaks loose and the prices come down a little bit, Florida's going to be a good one. I would look at Bay County if you're looking at Florida, and they're, uh, it's called Mexico Beach. That's where the hurricane hit, but there's also a place up, um, oh, what's the name of that? Port St. Joe. Port St. Joe is amazing, dude. You guys should take a look at that place. Good morning, Benjamin. All right, Mark, off with the market. I saw that. Um, I don't know if it's uh, maybe somewhere in Alabama in the App Appalachia. A lot of retirees are starting to move into. It's like an area that's. Yeah, Alabama is cheap to live in too, and they don't have any state income tax either. Yeah. All right. I, Just here's natural gas. So it looks like natural gas had this big move up yesterday for some reason, but we ran into this resistance right around 180. And now it looks like it is heading back lower. So let's see what. Uh, so if you want to follow that or trade that, you can hit this uh, UNG, this um, natural gas ETF which is pretty much going to track it. All right. So hey, Vin, you need to give that a little bit of time, Vin. I'm telling you this market in Florida is fixing to change and it's going to come down pretty good because uh, Orlando was one of those elevated places too, where rents and houses are starting to cross and houses are way more expensive than the rents. So it's fixing to be a nice little area to move. All right. So here's Micron. Uh, and it's extremely overbought. <clears throat> so I'm going to just bring up this RSI indicator down here. Just to kind of show you a way to maybe think about it. So we, we are really overbought, right? You can see this RSI indicator. This is a way of measuring being overbought. Overbought means that something is trading above what would be its typical or usual trading range. A lot of strategies on Wall Street are based on this concept of reversion to the mean. All right. So the fact that this is really overbought is going to draw sellers into the market because they're going to be expecting a move back to the average. Really, really overstretched here. Now, a possible way to trade this would be, all right, I'm long this, it's going higher. Where should I get out? I don't want to get out. You know, you can't really try to pick the exact top. 
So you might say to yourself, all right, I don't want to get out until it starts to reverse. What could be a signal that a reversal is starting? Well, one could be that this RSI line starts to turn lower. So that could be a potential sell signal. Another could be, all right, if we get back within, if we get back into the neutral zone and we cross back below this red line, that could be a sign, that could be your trigger. So think about it, if something is really overbought and it starts to to become unoverbought, that could be the first sign that the buyers are kind of chilling out and coming back to normal and it's going to start going lower. So look, you could look for a reversal here. I like to use the Bollinger Bands too. Let's see what they look like. This is another way of measuring whether something is overbought. It's based on statistics. So these, this red line here is two standard deviations above the 20-day uh, moving average. So according to statistics, most trading, 95% of trading should be within two standard deviations of the mean. So notice how sometimes when we get above it, we reverse like here, here, and now we're, we're above it. So another potential signal to, for a reversal to be starting could be like, all right, if we get back below the upper Bollinger Band, that's where I would have my signal to, to pull the trigger. So the fact that we're really overbought is what we would call a setup. Like you pretend you're at like a race and the starter is like, get ready, get set. But they don't say go yet. Go would be when we get our trigger. So the trigger potentially could be the reversal down here. The trigger could potentially be we get back with below this Bollinger Band. The point is, is that you're not guessing. If you have a strategy like this, it prevents you from guessing. And when you don't guess, it makes trading a lot easier because you're not going to have like such you're not going to have so much emotion on the line, right? When people guess, when people don't know what to do, that's when you make mistakes. If you have a clearly defined strategy and you just follow it, it's like, all right, in a lot of ways, you got to think that, um, in a lot of ways, you got to think to yourself, my job is not to make money here. My job is to develop a strategy that makes money. And then my job is to execute it and stick to it. All right, so what was the other one? NVIDIA, I believe. Yeah. NVIDIA and AMD. No, it was Jax that asked the question. Let me find him. Bollinger bands are pretty effective because a, lot of, a lot of strategies these days are based on statistics. So I think they've become more effective over the years than they used to be. Soxel, Mark. Yeah, I mean, this is just going to follow the semis. So this, I would say right now, I mean, this looks pretty neutral, actually. So, I mean, it's up 90 cents, but just from a charting point of view, it looks pretty neutral. So this is, um, now this is, uh, I think AMD is the biggest name here. So let me just confirm that. You believe in Connecticut, they have voting already? For the presidential election, the, for you mean for the general? Yeah, dude. I mean, it's freaking. It's March, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, they should do the they should do the primaries, but they shouldn't be doing the general right now. See if that's for the for the, yeah, if that's for the primary, Mark, presidential primary. Oh, uh, okay. I used to get this paper, but it's just this like leftist rag. They do have a good. So, see, I don't subscribe. <laughs> I, should, I like getting it, though, because I like reading the comics. That's about it. <laughs> That's about all good in newspapers for, is the comics. And they even took the good comic strips out. <laughs> all right, let's go look at the markets here. So, S&P <laughs> this morning, up about 40 basis points. But just kind of trading sideways. Notice, though, we're starting to kind of, we might be starting to break our uptrend, our uptrend here. And I think what's an important dynamic going on in the market now is. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. 
Do you see he was he was talking about the bridge that collapsed and he was saying how he took the train over it? Hey, let me ask you guys, did y'all see him yesterday when the Palestinian people were razzing him in his speech and they asked for health care for the Gazans? And he says everybody deserves health care. So I maybe we're funding that now too. It's amazing. Yeah, so he claims he computed over a bridge by train many times, but it's never had rail lines on it. Unbelievable. <laughs> it is crazy. All right, anyway, so here's our technology sector. There's 11 sectors in the S&P, and if we go through the sectors, sometimes it can give us some insight into which way the market, border market is going to go. So tech is right in the middle of uh, the range. So I think right now it's important to watch the financials and the healthcare. No, no, I think we feel your pain in China. To, yeah. <laughs> That's funny, man. Man, I was thinking about going to Canada. No. Listen, I'm telling I've you, there's to, a beach uh, in Mexico somewhere. I've been to I've been to Montreal. I went to Montreal once and man, I had such a great time. I guarantee you downtown Guadalupe is more more safe than New York City right now because probably all of them are here causing trouble. <laughs> yeah, right. We should just go there and loot their stores. That's what I mean. We should all go to Mexico. I just I I, I just I can't believe it, man. They they found there's this guy who was who was caught as, of suspected a murder out here in Long Island. He dismembered the person he killed. They found body parts. And the guy got out on a promise to appear. He's a friggin' murderer. Dude, listen, those those things, Mark, I tell you what, I, I watch them give people ROR, which is released on your own recognizance bonds for DUIs. And that's a crime that you choose to commit. You know, you choose to drive that car. And they do this for all these other things that are just heinous crimes. And I just don't understand how they can sleep at night knowing that they've allowed somebody like that back out on the street. It just doesn't make a, a lick of sense oh, and how they crazy. justify it. It doesn't matter. I don't, I don't understand how you can justify that. Yeah. They're crazy, man. They're crazy. Like you see all these, all these people over at MSNBC are whining and complaining because they sign what's your face, Ronald McDonald's. It's oh like, my God. it's like these people have promoted lies for four years and they have, they walk around on such a moral high horse. They think they're so smart. You know, it's like there's they're so wrong, you know, about everything. Joe Scarborough. What a fucking asshole that guy is, man. F bomb there. Um, listen, but you know what, though? The <laughs> yeah, Republicans well, are no better. I mean, you look at this guy, Mike Gallagher from Wisconsin. He's going to leave his seat three days after the date that he actually needs to leave his seat so they can have a special election. So now you've got one <laughs> member of Congress that's going to be in control of the whole entire house. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's a strange times that we live in here. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, it's looking at the financials here. So we've gotten to this former peak, former all-time high, and a lot of times when we get to former peaks, we hit resistance. So different things drive the market at different times. I think this is one of the things that's in the driver's seat now. It's not going to come from technology because tech is right in the middle of a trading range. So when things are in the middle of ranges, they tend really not to make important moves. What are important moves? Well, the way things act when they get to like an important resistance level like this. Um, and then the other thing I think it's important to watch here is our healthcare sector. So we're having a pretty nice move here this morning, but notice how it's just still kind of trading right above the support. So if the financials reverse or continue to reverse, and if healthcare ends up breaking this support, that's going to be a catalyst for the market to kind of break lower. Yeah. So here's our, uh, energy ETF or energy. Now notice this here, kind of the same thing, right? We've gotten to a former peak, very similar to what we're seeing in, um, in the financial sector. We get to a former peak and we run into resistance. There tends to be resistance at former peaks because you have people that bought at them 
that regret doing so when the price falls out of bed. So they tell themselves, hey, if this ever gets back up to my price, I'm going to sell. If I can get out of break even, I'm going to. So when it finally gets back to their price, you get these remorseful buyers trying to sell. And that puts resistance at the former peak. So same action that we're seeing in financials we're seeing here. So that's just something to keep an eye on. Now, if, but if oil move makes a, a move higher, this is going to break and these are going to continue to run. But energy has done very well this year. Everyone's really focused on AI and so forth. But I mean, look at this. So energy is up 17% in just in just two months. Mm. That all goes right to the consumer, too. There's no way to get away from that. I was at this party last night for the my land the land trust and you know these people are not generally people that really talk about markets but man people were talking about inflation really yeah and a lot of these people are pretty you know crunchy you know crunchy like wilderness people that they're not really political or they don't really pay attention <laughs> to news but they know when they got to pay more I don't think I've ever heard somebody called a crunchy wilderness person. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> this one dude was telling me, um, this guy uh, was, he's like this like mushroom dude. And uh, like, they're making like building products and stuff out of mushrooms. Now they're like building oh, dude, houses. Yeah. I mean, are you familiar with this? Yeah, absolutely. And the hemp, the hemp creed, the hemp creed is awesome. It's uh, it's lighter than concrete and stronger, and it's fire resistant. Resistant. Yeah, it's uh. So I'm gonna have to look and see if there's any companies that are like publicly traded that are involved in the mushroom industry. Pretty interesting though. Yeah. Well, you know, there's a lot of good side effects for it. I mean, well, they they treat it for PST, PTSD. You know, these micro doses of psilocybin, and it really helps a lot of people get clarity. And I mean. You know, God put all the plants and seeds and fruit bearing plants for us to use. Yeah. So if you live in a mushroom house and you want to trip out, you could just go like take a bite of your wall. Lick the wall. Yeah. Yeah, man. All right. So let's see. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. So anyway, uh, I think we got to really pay attention to interest rates. We're, we're not close, but it's just something to have on the radar screen. If this TLT ends up breaking this support down here. That's going to result in a in a, probably in a pretty rapid move lower, which means interest rates are going to be moving higher. Now, one of the things that I keep talking about is if you look at a lot of these food things, right? Like here's wheat. This stuff is actually down over the last year, like pretty significantly, which is really surprising because people are talking about how expensive food is, but yet the agricultural commodities are down. So when these things start to reverse, we have oil heading higher now. These things are going to potentially reverse. Let's see what corn looks like. I think we're going to, I think we could potentially get another real big whammy of like inflation. You know, here's corn. Look at corn in one year chart, how much it's down. Yeah. See, and that's it too. A loaf of bread's $5, but wheat's cheap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I think that this, um, let's see here, soy. I mean, it's down 20% over the last year. The only major food commodity that isn't down big is rice and it's like pretty flat. And so I, so when, if these, I, I'm just, here's my concern. If these things start to rally and reverse, you got this out of control government spending, you're going to have big moves higher in, in, these food commodities, oil's moving higher, copper's moving higher. I just think it's going to be like another, another whammy. Eggs are expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's this deli where I go to and uh, yeah, eggs have tripled in price. And this deli I go to a freaking grilled chicken salad, man, is $22 now. I used to go down there and get them for lunch every now and then. It was like 10, 15 bucks. It's $22. And, yeah, I don't uh, need out anymore. Yeah, all. so a place like that is I, I don't I don't see how they're gonna stay in business because eventually people are just gonna be like, you know, I can't have 
I, I'm not going out to for lunch anymore. I'm just going to make a sandwich at home and bring it to work. <laughs> you know, it's not only that. It's that automatic tipping thing at every place you go to. Even the drive through at McDonald's offers you to make a tip to the person in the drive through now. Are you and, serious? Oh, dude, you haven't noticed this, Mark? Screw that, man. Well, I don't go to McDonald's. But screw no, that, but man. everywhere. It may not be at, uh, specifically at McDonald's, but I know like at different places, you're, they stick it out the window and it's automatically got you wanting to do a tip. And this, it's aggressive tipping. And I, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't mind tipping good service, but I shouldn't be forced to tip every time I make a transaction with a restaurant. Yeah, it's a tip for a reason, right? Right. It's a tip for good service, not because you just showed up to work today. Coco's up, huh? Coco. Oh, wow. Uh, so is this coffee or is this chocolate? That would be chocolate. Cocoa Futures, raw sugar has three week peak. Wow. Cocoa Futures set record high. Shrinking global supplies. Coffee. Let's see what sugar is doing. Uh, we've obviously looked at. It. See, look at the look at this. So here we have our clear example of something gets to support, and it rallies. So whether it's sugar or whether it's a crypto or a stock, same thing. Get to you find support at former support levels. Pretty pretty uh, pretty amazing, man. All right, let's just see if there's any news here that we need to pay attention to before we. Wrap things up. So we're not going to be here on Friday. The market is closed. Which is a good Friday, and you guys should be thinking about Jesus anyway. Yeah. Hey, yeah. can I ask you something? Me? I don't want to be, uh, yeah, I don't want to be a person that, you know, thrives on something bad that's happened. But what does this affect at Baltimore? Isn't this like the largest shipping hub on the eastern United Seaboard? It's one of them. Um, I don't know. I mean, none of the stocks really. Oh, let's see what it says right here. Logistics experts weighing on supply chain impact. It's really amazing. Only six people. Only six people died. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I mean, not nice, but you know what I mean. It could have been a lot worse. All right, let's see here. The port, the port of Baltimore is one of the top 15 U.S. ports and the East Coast port closest to the Midwest. Uh, let's see. With nothing moving in and out in Baltimore for the moment, we expect congestion will build at alternative East Coast ports. Yeah, it doesn't really. Wow, that's a lot of cars and a lot of coal. Yeah, that makes sense. So they ship the coal from there instead of, you know, bring it down from West Virginia to Baltimore. And mm. then, again, the question is how uh, how long will it take for them to cl clean it up? I mean. Well, if they have to investigate it, Mark, they got to do it piece by piece, which means it'd be years. Well, I don't think there's anything to investigate. <laughs> it's a freaking ship crashed into it. Well, I think you have I to mean, look at what happened. I mean, I mean, I'm, look, man, everything's a computer. That could have been a cyber attack. They could have cyber hit. They could have. They could have been standing on the like same way those guys at the TG Max were sitting in the parking lot with the Wi-Fi can. Somebody could have been sitting on the shore hitting that boat and knocking the power out with a computer. It's just that simple. So, I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't a terrorist attack, or it was. I'm just saying that we should be a little bit more objective about this instead of automatically coming out and say, oh. These two guys that have been driving ships for 25 years just ran it to the side of this thing perfectly. I don't know. I think it has to be looked at a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I remember after 9-11, they had, um, you know, all these bridges, these suspension bridges are the big the cables are just a bunch of little cables. Mm -hmm. And they said, like, there's the where the base is. If one guy got in there with a blowtorch. In about 24 hours, he could cut enough of the cables that it would bring down the entire bridge. So now they always have cops at all those at the bases of all the bridges. But uh, it but, came down uh, because he hit it perfect, Jax. I mean, they hit that that ship hit that center stanchion absolutely dead nuts, and it just knocked it straight down. 
Really? The Fed is saying it was feronious, huh? Hmm. What does feronious mean? Feronious means it was uh, done with ill intent. What is it? Done with ill intent. Felonious, feronious. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, all right. Anyway, if anyone has any questions, let me know. I just think that uh, we really should pay attention to what's going on in financials. And then, I mean, healthcare looks like it's okay for now. But um, if it starts to look like it's going to break that 145 level, I would pay attention. I mean, I don't think it's going to happen today um, unless there's some kind of major news out. Sweet, Brandy. Congratulations on that Doge trade. <laughs> Without it. Some other Thank you. cryptos that are like really popular these days. Dude. So then felonious would be with intent, feronious would be without intent. Thank you, Jax, for making me smarter today, buddy. Feronious. Or at least enlightening me. Yeah, so here's our Dogecoin coming back to life. Let's see what Bitcoin is doing. Nice. What's amazing is I'm, you know, I'm on all these like job sites from when I was looking for a new gig years ago, and all of a sudden, it's just there's so many things for like crypto, crypto analysts, crypto news letters. Uh, you know, it, I didn't see stuff for like a year. And now all of a sudden, every day, it's, there, I see it like jobs in my my inbox for like crypto analyst this, crypto analyst that. Everybody's getting pumped for the halving. Yeah. Was that, anyway, Randy, isn't that like client, two weeks? Hasn't really done much today or yesterday. I would just say, good lesson. A good lesson here, though, is right. Is when we started to sell off, where do we find support? At just some random level, some random price? No, we found support at the level that had previously been resistance. So resistance turns into support. If something's heading lower, and you're wondering where you should buy it. Instead of just jumping in there, if it's if it's trending lower, there's no need to jump in because if you wait, you're going to just buy it at a better price. So a thing to do would be if something is moving lower, you could say to yourself, all right, it's getting close to the level that was resistance. So there's a good chance there's going to be support there. So this would have been a good target to buy at. And sure enough, it worked out. Same thing with selling. There tends to be resistance at former peaks. So if you're trading this, and you're long it and you're wondering, hey, where should I sell? Well, it would be a logical place to have a sell target up around here, 73,000, because it was a former peak, like around 73,200. All right. Anyway, if anyone has any questions, let me know. I'm getting ready for this uh, eclipse, man. That's going to be pretty cool. April 8th. Hey, guys. Okay, so... We're in a process of doing the finalizations on the Mark Petrino's trading school. <clears throat> this is a free course that we're giving out. This is a, a one lesson. It's got quizzes and everything involved with it. We'd like you to download it. This is the uh, link. And if you would, please give us some opinion on whether we what we need to do to make it better for you. So if you would reach out to operations at stockmarketjobber.com or market stockmarketjobber.com. And uh, other than that, have a wonderful day. Yeah, we'll see you all tomorrow morning. Thanks, everyone. Right. You got it.